Hold on to your hat, you're screaming down the alley, I never coming back. Get out of my bud, get out of the sack, don't give me no lip, don't give me no, no way. Get out of the madhouse, tear it all down, get out of the madhouse, burn it to the ground. Got to go, got to get out, get out of my face, get out of my shack, now you've had a fair share. You had a fair whack. Hold on to your, hold on to your hat. You're heading out of here and never coming back. Get out of the madhouse. Hello, and today we are doing championship predictions for match day number 42 of the 2020 to 21 pre uh, championship season. Nearly went into Premier League mode there, but no, it's championship time and it is really, really big. This is another game week of massive fixtures in the EFL Championship. And just as the song suggests, the song of the weekend, hold on to your hat because it's going to be a bumpy ride in these playoff push, promotion push and relegation scrap. So hold on to your hat by, of course, the legendary Rolling Stones. That is the song of the weekend. And what is the colour of the weekend? It's going to be purple. And the theme of the weekend, I'm feeling a little bit of derbies. It's derby day. And that is because Watford face Luton Town in the M1 derby. It's going to be fought, um, toughly contested and fought and fought and battled and all those things. Thrown into one. Massive game for Watford. Come on, you horns. But let's get into my predictions this week. We'll look back on last week. Smash a like on the video. Make sure you su subscribe and comment your predictions. And uh, it really does help me out. It would be appreciated. So keep on liking those videos and sharing it with your friends. Let's get into it though. Now, in week 41, we actually didn't do too badly. Because we got ourselves a lovely little correct score in the... Win for Barnsley over Middlesbrough. 2-0, what we said. We also went with a 3-1 Watford win. It was 2-0, so correct goal difference. We went with a Swansea win over Millwall. That was very good. Three points. Bournemouth win over Coventry. 3-1. Uh, that's what we predicted. And we got some incorrect results in the other games. Huddersfield-Rotherham. We went with a 1-1. It was 0-0. So, again, another correct goal difference. Preston-Brentford. No one saw... Well, I didn't see uh, the Brentford win coming. I went for Preston just out of hope, really, for Watford. Sheffield Wednesday game, we went with a Sheffield win. They absolutely, you know, smashed it. QPR, fair play to them. Luton game, just out of Watford, really. We went with a Wickham win, but it was a Luton one. And then the rearranged games, of course, took place in midweek. And Rotherham against QPR was one of them. Now, this one, I went with a QPR win because... You know, it was Rotherham. But fair enough, Rotherham. That is a massive three points. And Freddie Ladapo, once again, is looking very, very tasty. So he got himself two goals in the space of two minutes. And Michael Smith on 90 minutes, finishing it off in style. Then we had Huddersfield against Bournemouth. And this was another big game in this respect for Watford that we don't really want Bournemouth to catch up with us. I mean, they're pretty far off at this point, but they could still get playoffs and... You know, you never know uh, at this point in time. It's very tight at the top. But it did finish in the end of the day. Huddersfield Town. Uh, I actually don't know the score. I've got to, I've got to be honest. <laughs> it was Huddersfield Town 1, Bournemouth 2. Um, so 2-1 two, win. We went with a 3-1. Um, so we didn't get the result in that QPR game. But we at least did it in this one. Um, just the three points though. And then we had Sheffield Wednesday against Swansea. And... You know, this was, you know, another game where we really need Sheffield Wednesday to just help us out. But it couldn't happen and it was a 2-0 Swansea win with goals from Jamal Lowe and Jay Fulton. I went with 2-0 to Swansea. So, thank you very much. Correct score. We will take that very, very nicely. Now, I'm not sure what the overall points is for me, but all in all, not a bad week. Two correct score lines in there. Quite a few correct goal differences. And the odd correct result and some, mainly most, have been incorrect results this week. So we need to bounce back in week 42 and uh, just get a bit more than that really. But let's get into it. 
And before we do, let me talk about Watford. And fantastic that we have been awarded the Community Club Winner of the Year by the EFL Awards 2021. Fantastic. That is brilliant. And um, they in association with your move and Community Club of the Year. That is fantastic for Watford. You know, we talk about how we're the original family club, but it's great to see it actually being noticed and being appreciated and really it is fully deserved Watford from London or Hertfordshire but still community club of the year thank you very much that looks very very nice so let's get into then our first round of predictions but before we do that we got to make sure we are singing that song over the weekend and uh, I think the color of the week we uh, we went with didn't we I think it was was it purple yeah Anyway, let's move on. Uh, Rotherham against Coventry is the first one. Now, I'll admit, it's not ideal stuff because at the time of filming, I promise you, it's 7.08 and basically the game is kicked off. I didn't realise it was a 7 o'clock kickoff, which is just a bit early. There's just no need for it. But it was a rearranged game and this is big. This is absolutely colossal in the relegation scrap. Rotherham, if they get a win here... They're level on points with Coventry and with two games in hand. So big. And if Coventry win, it's a massive blow for Rotherham despite those games. I always drop pens in these videos. Despite those games in hand for Rotherham, it's still a massive blow. So it is crucial. And Rotherham will be really happy after their win in the last game against Queen's Park Rangers. Whereas Coventry, well, they've not been brilliant recently. And they really did get absolutely thumped by Bournemouth. So that won't help their confidence. But it could swing either way. I fancy, though, a Rotherham win. Off the back of that QPR game, they're going to have so much confidence. And I think Coventry are probably the better team on paper. But, you know, with this championship season, with the midweek games, it is hectic. And often the on-paper teams is not what happens in real life. So my prediction for this first game is going to be Rotherham United 2 Coventry City, nil. All right, now we've got the game between Blackburn Rovers and Derby County. And don't forget, as of course, we'll be looking at our fantasy team, how we got on last week and basically looking towards this game week and uh, making some juicy transfers, if we haven't already. I can't even remember at this point. But Blackburn against Derby, it sees the team currently sitting in the position of 20th against the team in 17th. So... Both sides have really dropped off in form. I don't know. It's not guaranteed yet for, for Derby, really. And when I say it's not guaranteed, it really isn't guaranteed. Because at this point in time, they're just one or sorry, four goals in terms of goal difference away from Coventry. So Coventry win and then Derby are really in the thick of things. So Rooney has still got to really plug on with points and push on with points. Um, but Blackburn are one of the teams with the worst form in the league. So this could be a perfect time to play them for Derby County. And I just fancy Derby to do something here at Ewood Park. Though it can be tough, I think that Derby, they have got a little bit of determination about them. So Blackburn Rovers 1, Derby County 2. Okay, and then in terms of goal scorers, we're going to start with the Blackburn game because it kind of really is the first game of game week um, 42, and the Rotherham game is technically not in this game week, I don't think. So, anyway, um, in terms of goals in this Derby game, though, we shall say that the first goal of the game for the matchup between these two sides will come for... Let's have a look. Um, yeah, so Blackburn Derby. Uh, Blackburn Derby, Blackburn Derby. Just trying to look now. Yeah. So I think the first goal will come for Blackburn and that is through the forward that's Adam Armstrong and then Derby get their goals through the forward that is Colin Kazim Richards and then the second for Derby I'm going to say from midfielder Tom Lawrence. Now it's a game between Reading and Cardiff City and this is another big game in this championship run-in because it sees the team probably unlikely to get playoffs against the team pretty much sure of getting playoffs. And I say pretty much sure, but they have now slipped out of it because that really big loss to Watford was a big blow for them. 
Um, it meant that Rotherham, um, sorry, Barnsley could take advantage. And after their win, their second one on the bounce against Middlesbrough, it puts them into the playoff positions. So, yeah, fantastic from Barnsley. Alex Mauer, once again, he just keeps on scoring. And Daryl Dyke as well. But in terms of the team here in Reading, I do feel that they are still in the fight for playoffs and they can play better than that. But it just was a moment of missed chances against Watford, especially that Puskas one. How he's not forced that in after the really, really good work from Michael Elise, the setup by Mate, he just needs to finish that. And it really was the difference. They kind of lost it in the first half because of those missed chances and because of Watford's clinical nature. So... Yeah, Reading really struggled to affect Watford's defence in the second half. But this is a much better game in terms of winnable uh, nature. Cardiff have really struggled for form. And that is why their playoff push looks unlikely now. Um, very unlikely. So these both teams looking for the playoffs. Reading more likely to still be in the shout. Um, and therefore, I'm going to back Reading to get the three points. So Reading 2, Cardiff City 1. And goal scorers in this one. We shall say that the first goal of the game in the match will come for Michael Elise. And then Cardiff, I reckon, will equalise in the game. And that will be through none other than the man that is forward, Kiefer Moore. He's not been, you know, that good recently, but maybe he'll be back in form. And then the winner scored for Cardiff, oh, sorry, for Reading, I should say, um, is going to be actually an own goal from Cardiff. And that own goal is by defender Sean Morrison to finish it Reading 2, Cardiff 1. Now it's Brentford against Millwall. Now Brentford come into this off the back of a few interesting results that, you know, will have been very much needed for that Brentford team. And, you know, ultimately they have been struggling to win, but they got it done at the end of the day in the last one against Preston. And when I say got it done, I mean got it done in style because that Preston game they completely tore them to shreds five goals for the away side there Tony once again another from Mark Marcus Force Brian and Burmo with an early one and Mark Condes finishing it all off so yeah Brentford really are hopeful of playoffs and maybe the gap to second is too big I don't know nine nine points it is now so it's difficult but right now I feel like it's going to be an interesting one with Watford. Uh, they're going to be hopeful of a second spot, but Brentford are always a threat. And in this kind of game, you certainly would fancy Brentford to get a victory. Although Millwall aren't the worst team in the world, they haven't been that consistent this season and they haven't scored a lot of goals. Um, 41 scored and 40 conceded. So they're pretty solid, but they're not exciting. And I think that therefore they won't have enough to get past this Brentford defence. So I'll say Brentford... Three, Millwall, nil. In terms of goal scorers here for the home side, we shall say Brentford get two goals through Ivan Tony, And then I reckon that the third goal for Brentford will be finished off by Marcondes. All right, now it's a game that is between the likes of... Let me just find it. It is Middlesbrough and QPR. And this is obviously... Uh, another 12.30 kickoff. All of these games rearranged uh, out of respect for Prince Philip, whose funeral is on 3 o'clock Saturday. Um, and Middlesbrough are really one of those teams right now that you just quite quite can't get your head around why they've been losing games. And look, the playoffs are probably over, but you know they had a good go of it, and they're still a decent side at the end of the day. QPR are just behind them in 11th, so it's going to be a tight game, I'd imagine. Both teams defensively not brilliant, but also attackingly not brilliant. So a nil-nil maybe is on the cards, or a 2-2. Probably a draw, though. So I will go with Middlesbrough 1, QPR 1. And goal scorers in this game, though. Let's say that the goals in this one will come from none other than... Now, I'm trying to think of some defensive players for Middlesbrough. I, I'm pretty sure that um, Fry has got an injury. He's expected that back in like late April or something. Um, but in terms of the Middlesbrough goal, oh, I don't know. Let's say the defender for Middlesbrough will score in this game, and that is the 
player number four, Grant Hall, that's been putting in many good, uh, inspiring performances. So then Middlesbrough take the lead, but QPR hit back with an equaliser, and that equaliser, I think, will be scored by the man that got a lovely little goal against Coventry a few weeks back. It was Chris Willock. I'm not sure if he's actually related to Joe Willock, but anyway, he's been doing very good form recently for QPR. Let's move on to Nottingham Forest against Huddersfield. Another big game. Uh, more so, I'd say, probably for um, Huddersfield because they could still get sucked into the relegation scrap. Um, Forest are pretty much safe, I think. They have been a bit up and down again this season. But yeah, I, I guess you could say that they haven't conceded too many. But also, they haven't really scored enough. Um, 34 goals after 41 games is just not good enough. But they are sitting on 49 points, so fair enough. Now, Borough going into this, I'm sorry, Forrest going into this, off the back of two wins in the last three. So it's been a bit of an improvement. Whereas their opponents here at Huddersfield, well, their form has been pretty, pretty poor. And no wins in the last five. They need to get some crucial points to try and, you know, just calm it down a little bit and assure them that they're not going to go down. But I don't know. I feel like this Huddersfield team is just in a really bad way at the minute. And I'm not going to say they'll get anything from this game. So Nottingham Forest 2, Huddersfield 0. And what shall we say in terms of goal scorers in this game? I think I just don't see Huddersfield scoring and a clean sheet is probably going to come. So goals for H uh, Nottingham Forest... Let's say Cyrus Christie, a very attacking fullback. And uh, the second goal for Nottingham Forest. Let's go with another one from Glenn Murray. All right, now it's the game that is between... Hang on, where's it gone? Here it is. Right, it is Swansea and Wickham Wanderers. Now, <laughs> again, we said this last week with the Sheffield Wednesday game. Hopeful of a win, but we know realistically it's not going to be. It's just so frustrating how Swansea are just manag managing to have really easy games at the end of the season, whereas we've got really tough games and we have to play Swansea, Brentford, Norwich. And they really did crank up the pressure with their win against Sheffield Wednesday because it means now it's just a seven-point gap. Ugh, I don't like it. I really don't. The good thing is, I suppose, our goal difference is so inferior to Swansea. Oh, sorry, so superior to Swansea. So if worst comes to worst and it's nail-biting stuff, We've got that on our side. And we have been so much the better team in terms of form. So it is crazy, really, that off the back of three defeats in the last five, they go and get two defeats, uh, sorry, two wins in a row. It kind of is coming out of uh, nothing, really. But this is the kind of game, again, you'd expect them to win. But I don't know, maybe Wickham, they're going to go for it as well because they need everything they can get to get some points and to stay up. A win here, provided that Sheffield Wednesday somehow managed to lose their match with Bristol City means that they could at least go off 20, 24th. So it would be a very unlikely result. But I'm still going to back Swansea to drop points. Fingers crossed, eh? Let's go with the score of Swansea City 1, Wickham Wanderers 1. And what about goal scorers in this game? Well, it's another tough one. But we are going to go for the first one coming from defender Gay. That is, I think it's Mark Gay. The defender. Uh, and uh, the other goal in the game that's going to be scored by Wickham, I shall say, is going to be through Uche Ikpezu. All right, let's move on to the next matchup then. And that game is between Luton and Watford. Come on, you ones. And it's a massive rivalry, the M1 derby. These teams hate each other. And hence the theme of the week this time, uh, especially with the song, uh, hold on to your hats. We're facing the Mad Hatters, the Hatters, that is Luton Town. And I've got to be honest, uh, it's not exactly um, a game you would expect us to lose. But when these kind of rivalries come around, I guess form does kind of get thrown out the window a little bit. So I'm worried about that, I've got to be honest. But I'm still having faith in Watford. You've got to believe and you've got to hope for a win in this game. We did get it done. In August, I think it was, or very early on at least in the season. 1-0, goal from Joao Pedro. But I think we can make it a bit more comprehensive here. Let's say Luton Town 0, Watford 3. And goal scorers in this game, let's go for the players of the following. It's going to be, first of all, Ken Semmer. 
Then Ismail Assar once again. And the final goal, I'm calling it, but I've got a feeling it'll be an assist by Daniel Backman as he just completely pumps it up the pitch. And who does it fall for? for? Bringing it down and having a fantastic shot? Well, I shall say that player is going to be Philip Zinkenagel to make it 3-0 away from home. All right, now let's get around to the game between the teams of Sheffield Wednesday and Bristol City. Now, this one ultimately is going to be tight. It's going to be nervy. Both teams have been, in terms of form, pretty awful right now. So you don't fancy either of them to have an absolute wonder of a game. Although we say that Sheffield Wednesday beat Cardiff in their last home game. And that was crazy stuff, really. But then they go and get absolutely smacked up by QPR. So at this point, Sheffield Wednesday are just so uh, you know frustrating for their fans. They just can't put a run together. And it is you know a point where they've put themselves in this situation. So they are kind of in, in the mud a little bit. But uh, no, I think in this game... Bristol City, they really have been in pretty poor form. And that's what's seen them slide down to 14th. Three defeats in the last five. So it is a bit of an opportunity here for Sheffield Wednesday. And I've just got a feeling they'll get at least a point. Maybe not a win. Sheffield Wednesday to draw this one. 2-2. And uh, goal scorers, I'm not really sure to be honest. I don't really know who scores for Sheffield Wednesday these days. <laughs> uh, Sheffield Wednesday against... Bristol City. Uh, let's say... I don't know. Oh, I just really don't know. Alright, let's say the first goal is going to be scored by Sheffield Wednesday. And that will be through midfielder Adam Reach. And then Bristol City hit back with a goal of their own. Uh, and that will be through the midfielder also. And that man is none other than... Casey Palmer. Then Bristol City go ahead again. Uh, well, I say again. They turn the game on its head through Naki Wells. And then the equaliser, which could be a crucial point come the end of the season for Sheffield Wednesday to make it 2-2, I think will come this time through the forward that is Josh Windass. All right. Now we've got the next matchup this game week between Stoke and Preston North End. Now, Preston, they've not had a good season. Are they safe, though? Probably. Just about. Now, Stoke, though, they really have fallen a bit. Uh, they've just been too inconsistent. But there was one time we thought they are definitely going to at least get in the playoffs. But it doesn't seem that's going to be the way now. So, yeah, disappointing stuff, really, for for uh, the manager, Michael O'Neill. So, I think Stoke, you know, their home form has been better than their away form, I think. So, they should maybe have enough to, to beat Preston. But it will be very marginal. Stoke 1, Preston North End 0. And in terms of goal scorers here, I think that, you know, Stoke haven't had a lot of goals in them recently. So that is a bit of a concern for them. But we shall say the only goal comes from the forward that is playing for that team right now in a very good way. You know, he's a solid player, but he just doesn't score enough times. And that is forward... Jacob Brown. All right, now we've got the next matchup this game week. And that one is between the teams of Norwich and Bournemouth. Now, these two, of course, were Premier League sides just last season. One of them will most likely be another Premier League team next season. The other most likely will not. So this is a game that is going to be high th highly contested, I think. Bournemouth haven't been you know, putting good enough performances in recently, and that's why they have slipped down the table a fair bit. But Norwich, on the other hand, they've got a massive incentive coming into this because they know a win is enough to get them into the Premier League. Two points is all they need. On 90, after 41, very good form. Uh, fair enough to them. I think they'll get it done. I think Bournemouth, they still look like they could get playoffs um, with 71 points. Um, but I've got to fancy Norwich. They're just so good at Carrow Road. Norwich City 2, Bournemouth 1 in a very close game. And I think that goal scorers here will be scored by, first of all, Dan Juma for the away side. And then two from the absolute legendary forward, Timu Puki. Right, that is my prediction. Let's move on to the next matchup. 
And that is between the teams Rotherham and Birmingham. Another big game. Rotherham have their second of the week after Coventry. And if they can't get the result against Coventry, I, I literally don't know what the score is, then <laughs> this is another, you know, jab at it, another chance to redeem themselves. But at this point, they're probably going to be struggling to stay up. The games in hand is a big factor, of course, but it could cause them fatigue. It could cause them, you know, more stress. I don't know. But ultimately, Birmingham is a winnable game. So either way, I would say it's probably going to be a Rotherham win because Birmingham are quite poor. So Rotherham won. Birmingham, nil. And I don't know who's going to score, but let's move on to the final game. And that is Coventry against Barnsley. I'm going to say Coventry, one. Barnsley, two. Uh, and by the way, chances are that the man that plays up front for Birmingham, Djukovic, will probably score against Rotherham, even though I didn't predict it. I didn't have the chance to actually this week to do my fantasy team, but it is what it is. Thanks for watching. See you later.